hello bonjour ciao and welcome to my youtube channel my name is tolu and i wanted to film a cheeky little q a about medicine so i asked you guys on my instagram my twitter and so on to send in your questions that you have about the degree whether it be about my personal journey questions you had about the application process and any doubts and worries you may have about the degree so hopefully i can answer some of those questions in this video and i've got them here on my phone i selected um, about 20 questions that i thought would appeal to a wider audience um so hopefully in this video you've got some extra tips and um, tricks that you guys could use for your own applications um, and just to help you along your journey if you're looking into studying medicine and if not hopefully you just find this video fun and interesting to watch because there could be some things that may apply to you even if you aren't interested in studying medicine so here goes question one is what is the best and worst thing about studying medicine um and for me as you probably would already know i kind of want to be a doctor so the best thing about studying medicine is that the end goal for me will be qualifying to be a doctor because that's been a career aspiration of mine for a really long time now and i've detailed um why i chose medicine in the previous videos but generally it just allows me to develop a greater appreciation for the human body um, and use um that knowledge and skill to help other people which is what i think is amazing um but saying that the worst thing about studying medicine is definitely the hard work i mean it's really enriching being able to do all of this work but at the end of the day it is a lot of work it can be very stressful um but the career is quite um it's a really nice humbling um career to get into so i think it'll sort of combat the stresses behind the hard work essentially but yeah um, the next question is what are the things that could make a person reconsider applying to medicine it's like with the first question definitely the amount of work that you have to do um medicine is a forever developing subject so even if you were to complete the first five six years of a medicine degree there are still more courses that you can do there are still new techniques being developed so it's a never ending educational journey i guess so if you're not one for school or like learning all the time then it may not be for you because you always have to develop and you always have to keep reading when it comes to medicine because there's always something new and always something that you can look into and read into to develop your um skill set um also the length of a degree like it's a six like for me it's a six year course for some of us it's five years so it's a very very long time to like reach the end goal so if you're not a very patient person then it may uh not necessarily be for you i don't know i don't know but yeah the next question is do you have any recommended resources for first year medics and i'm still in first year so i'm still figuring stuff out for myself but what i've been advised and told um so far are in terms of learning a syllabus because we have a syllabus for oxford um but it's quite specific but there's one book that essentially is the backbone of our syllabus and that is the oxford handbook for preclinical medicine and i'll include like a photo or something hi guys editing tolu here here is a book i am talking about it is the oxford handbook of medical sciences so yeah i don't know where my book is it's probably downstairs i ended up finding the book on my chest of drawers so much for great searching tolu <laughs> but that book when it comes to learning first year content at least for oxford has been a lifesaver it's oh, basically like a nice little summary of the content that we need to know in a handheld format and it's quite blasphemous but a lot of people coin it the bible because it contains essentially all the information that you need to know for us to pass first year so that's been really handy and even if you aren't on the oxford course it's still very much applicable to whatever medicine degree that you take because it includes so much information and it's really really handy um in terms of learning anatomy for me i found anatomy flashcards to be really useful so i know the best two are the netters anatomy flashcards and the greys um anatomy flashcards oh don't mind me i'm just modeling my netters flashcards I personally use the Netters flashcards because I have the Greys student textbook and then the pictures in the textbook of the Greys 
textbook is the same as the images in the Grey's flashcards. I wanted something different to look at, so I've got the Netta's flashcards. And it's just really great to be able to like whip out a card and look at um, amazing diagrams of um, parts of the body and learn it from there. Um, and also to help me learn anatomy, I um, watch videos by this amazing guy called Ackland. So if you just type in Ackland and anatomy, you'll come up with his videos and it's really, really handy for learning um, anatomy but i think in terms of resources those are the main ones like that you could use as a foundation but they're really really handy to have next question is do you have any tips for the b mat or the ucat um so i'm gonna pose like i'm gonna make a more detailed video on these topics in the future like i've got a plan for um what i want to post but in the meantime in terms of preparing for the b mat and the ucat Definitely don't use up the resources online too quickly. So I started practicing for my both of those exams about a month before the date of them. Um, because sometimes I feel like when you practice for so long for something, you kind of you may hit your peak too early when it comes to um, getting used to how the techniques are. So I say a month is about a good time to start practicing it because then your peak should hopefully be about when your exam is about to be in. Um, do you have any good books to read? So in my last video, I detailed um, what you could be doing with your application despite work experience being cancelled. And I mentioned quite a few books in that video. But the books that I read a lot personally um, was The Man Who Mistook His Wife for a Hat because it's a book based off of neuroscience and that is the specialty I want to go into. When Breath Becomes Air is an amazing novel, made me cry and it's a really really good read. The Immortal Life of Henrietta Lacks, Confessions of the GP, um, How We Live and How We Die, they're all pretty amazing and there are some really cool reading lists that you can find online too. I recommend looking at the Oxford Medicine reading list. So they have reading lists for almost all of their subjects and they have a, a bunch of really handy books that you guys can read from their website to give you some ideas too. But the books that I've mentioned just now are really handy and they're ones that I personally read myself. What advice would you give to an aspiring medic? I would say definitely keep focused on the end goal. Because the degree is so long and it's so strenuous sometimes trying to get into the degree it kind of it you like there are times when you could potentially lose motivation because you're doing all this work and it's stressful and it's tiring but honestly having your end goal in mind all the time will be very very helpful so for me in my room i have a sketch of a brain covered in flowers because my end goal is to hopefully become a neuroscientist neurologist i don't know the right term for it but just something to do with brains so i've got it in my room for when i work so that in case i have to feel low or just like down in the dumps i can look at it and be like okay i know what i'm working towards i can only get to that stage if i keep working so i kind of use it to help motivate me to continue doing my work um, and also try and get in touch with people who've already done the application process and who've already done the degree because listening to tips from older people it can be really really helpful because they all know things that you don't which is why I, I, like i created this channel to give you guys insights into what you should shouldn't do etc um so if you know anyone else um like in the year above who's done it or if you know like any doctors or like whatever, um, definitely try and reach out to some people to give you some extra advice uh, that you could use for your journey into medicine. Um, what advice do you have on getting into Oxford? Definitely work hard and make sure your grades are sufficient enough to meet their requirements because you can do a lot of work experience, you can read a hundred books, you could do all sorts, but if your grades aren't the minimum, for their requirements then what's the point so for me when i was applying the grade requirements were a star aa so definitely work towards getting your predicted grades to being at least a star aa or for whatever university that you want to apply to also in terms of um, applying to oxford and your personal statement Oxford really enjoy looking into what is called a supercurricular, which is an extracurricular that is in line with your subject. So for us, it would be volunteering and work experience, obviously because that's out of the picture now. There are alternatives that you need to do, and I'm going to include a little card wherever it will be of the video that I posted about what you could do in the meantime. But definitely read books, show your interest in the sciences because they really want to know your theoretical background of certain things because the first three years of an Oxford degree is the science and 
like the background of how things work and then the last three years will be the actual clinical hospital setting so definitely show your interest in your interest in the scientists because that will be what you get through first um what made you realize medicine was what you wanted to do so i used to volunteer with with an organization called saint john ambulance and through that i was able to go out on duties where i practiced my first aid out at events so just me being able to help people and having that initial clinical exposure really helped me so i just realized that okay through me doing this first aid i actually really enjoy helping people and i just wanted to continue that further um throughout my career path do you take your notes digitally or on paper so when it comes to my notes i actually it kind of applies to both because I use what is called a rocket book. The rocket book is technically a notebook. So you've got a pen, you write your notes on it by hand um, because I feel like I'm able to retain more information if I do it by hand, but it's only 32 pages long. And the trick is there is an app on your phone that you can download called the rocket book app. And basically you can scan the pages that you've put in on your phone and it can upload to like any digital format whether it be your OneDrive or Google Drive. Okay next question is what did you do for your work experience and I have gone into a lot more detail on this in previous videos but essentially I volunteered with St John Ambulance for like almost five years. Um, I volunteered as well with a company called Crossroads Care where you basically befriend someone in your neighbourhood who would have otherwise just been quite isolated so that was a really great experience for me and I did some laboratory work and work experience in Oxford itself um, and that was really cool. So the next question is how did you know you wanted to study at Oxford? Um, essentially Oxford is the number one school in the world for medicine um, and it's kind of like one of those I don't know I don't know I don't I can't really say anything without sounding like a, a mean person so i'm gonna just leave that question unanswered so um just offer a bit of clarification because in that moment i couldn't really think of a way to say what i wanted to say without sounding like a stuck-up brat um but essentially wherever you get your medical degree the end goal will be you being a doctor but the reason behind me choosing oxford is because it was the number one university in the world for medicine and like I don't know, I'd always just dreamed of going to Oxford or Cambridge because it was just one of those really cliche achievements that people wanted to go for and I was one of those people, so yeah. How do you answer why medicine in an interview? Um, the thing is with that question, answering with a cliche is kind of inevitable because a lot of us will have similar reasonings behind wanting to study this subject. Um, but literally just be truthful, talk about your experiences and what it like taught you, reflect on like your personal statement because surely in your personal statement you would have put down why you found medicine interesting. Um, but for me personally, I spoke about my St. John experience, um, how through doing things um, with the organisation, I kind of realised that this was the career path for me because I wanted to continue um, my first aid skills and my clinical skills in a clinical setting and for me the best like the most appropriate way for that would to be a doctor and to study medicine so literally just answer it truthfully and talk about why your experiences allowed you to come up with um the idea of wanting to study medicine um next question is do you have the free time to do other things yes we do believe it or not even though medics are very busy we do have time to have fun so as long as you like manage your time reasonably well there's nothing to say that you still can't like go clubbing or party or eat out all the time and like do other things like people have the time to do stuff i know a lot of medics um are very into sports so some people um play professionally not even professionally they play for the university and that takes a lot of time out but they're still able to do it amazingly so there is still plenty of time to do a lot of things you just have to like plan your day enough to allow you to do everything that you want to do essentially but yeah what would you tell your younger self about medicine and in brackets um, they put down in Oxford? Um, I would say that you're in for a shock. For me now, like, I feel like this is the first time I've properly struggled to comprehend certain subjects, but I would say don't be too worried about maybe not getting things right the first time. So I would say just be prepared for sort of your perception of things changing a little bit and just 
not be too upset about um, not necessarily being the best all the time. So just to remember that you're still a worthy and valuable person, but it's not by force always be at the top. Kind of, yeah, I guess I would say that to myself. Um, how do you deal with the high pressure of both a medical degree and studying at Oxford? And I think this question could apply to many, many people, but one thing I would highlight is knowing your support system. So whether that be your friends, your parents, your teachers and tutors, just know who your support system is because they will definitely help you when you like hit low points or if you're upset because they can offer out advice to you, um, which is really, really handy. Um, what was the biggest surprise to you for your course or your uni? Um, definitely the pace of the work. Like I knew I'd get a lot of work, but I didn't know how fast things would be taught to us so we are like we cover a range of topics so quickly and you don't get the chance to like necessarily go back to it unless your tutor wants to do a tutorial in that subject so for me it was just definitely the pace of everything um my voice is going <clears throat> but now i've sort of adjusted um to it so it's not as bad anymore but definitely the pace of everything within the degree um, what area do you want to specialise in? Neurology, neuroscience, brain stuff, because I think the brain's really cool. What is the hardest part about the application? Um, I would say the personal statement. Um, because you've got 4,000 characters to basically sell yourself and to prove to people that the work experience of the voluntary work, the books you've read, the lectures you've watched, the projects that you've done are better than others. And I know like other things like the, the pre-assessments tie into it, but I think the personal statements like it's really true reflection of who you are. So I think that's kind of, for me, the hardest part. The next question is, if it wasn't medicine, what would you study? Um, I really, really loved chemistry in school. Like I really wanted to continue with, the ke with chemistry. Like I loved and adored chemistry. And I was like kind of for some time even considering studying biochemistry, but then I felt like medicine was just a better fit for me but if i wasn't doing medicine i would definitely be doing biochemistry the last question is what is your favorite medical book or books um so the books i mentioned back at, like previously in the video are the ones i've read but my favorite one out of all of them was definitely when breath becomes air because it just really teaches you so much about the importance of empathy and sympathy it's just such a heartfelt book and it really just connected to me and it just it was just a really great read um but yeah that is gonna be the end of this video unfortunately hopefully i was able to answer questions about what of some use to some people i will probably do another q a in the future because there's so much um people want to know about medicine because it's just it's just such an interesting subject to study so i'll probably make another one in the future but in the meantime thank you so much for watching this video and i will see you in the next one bye Thank you.